In this video, we'll look at a number of examples of solving equations. I'd like you to write up your solutions to equations in what we will call a legacy style. Proper legacy style will have a number of characteristics. One, it'll be a, collect it'll be a collection of lines. Number one, each line is either an equation or an expl explanatory sentence. The legacy style for, a so for a, the solution of an equation, the first line will be the equation to be solved. Every equation after the first line will need to be the consequence of previous lines created by legal operations. Now let's talk about what legal operations are. A legal operation means that you took a previous equation and you replace an expression in that equation with an equivalent expression or a simplified expression. The second possibility for a legal operation is you do the same operation to both sides of the equation. So those are the only two things that can be done there. We'll now try to illustrate how to write things in legacy style, write the solution to an equation in legacy style for a number of examples. So here's our first start. The first line is the equation that we need to solve. Now there's often more than one way to solve an equation. In this particular equation I'm going to look at this expression right here and rewrite that fraction because a negative 3x over 25 is the same thing as a negative 3 over 25 times x that replacement has taken place. Now if I felt that it would be helpful to my granddaughter I might have put a, a line in here explaining what I was doing. I'm rewriting the right hand side with an equivalent expression. But since we're talking about it here, usually I won't write in the explanatory lines. Now then, the next thing that I'd like to look at is taking care of this 25. I'd like to have this instead of, if I multiply both sides of this equation by 25, then it would clear the fraction on that right hand side and maybe be a little bit easier to work with. Now my reason for multiplying by 25 was that I knew that these 25's would cancel each other as they reduce. As I rewrite the expression on the left hand side I'll, use, I'll need to use the, the distributive law. So now I'm going to choose to get the x's together. That is I'm going to add a 3x to both sides of the equation. I could write an explanatory line in here but since you and I are talking about it, I'm just going to add 3x to both sides of the equation. Now my reason for adding 3x to both sides of the equation was that it would eliminate the x's on the right hand side and put them all over to this side. When I gather like terms on this left hand side, I'll get 28 plus 28x plus 500 is equal to 0. Now it will be easy to subtract 500 from both sides then eventually I'll divide by 28. I can see all the steps that I want to do now. There's always a question when you're writing these things up how, how many lines you need to put in place so that people can follow what's happening. But I think my granddaughter will be able to recognize that this equation generates this equation. That is this last equation is a consequence of the one before and she'll be able to see that what we did was subtract 500 from both sides. Now let's divide both sides by 28. So we've found what x is, but notice that this fraction will reduce in a number of ways. One, both the, the top and the bottom are even, so I know that it will reduce somewhat. I need to, uh, to look for common factors and, and reduce those. And secondly, it's an improper fraction, so it might be nice to rewrite that as a, as a mixed number. 
So this previous expression on the right hand side has been written by an equivalent expression here. That minus sign could have been the negative of the fraction. I've factored out a 4 so that I can see that it's clearly going to, to cancel. And we're going to adjust this and just lift it up a little bit so th the next line will show. So now we've got an improper fraction. We want to know how many times 7 will go into 125. So we can write this as a mixed number. Actually, a lot of times when you're doing calculations, these improper fractions are easier to work with, actually. But in, in, sometimes people want you to put them in a, in a mixed number form. You should be able to do that. 7 goes into 125 17 times with the remainder of 6. So 125 over 7 is 17 and 6 seventeenths. There's our answer. Here's the next equation we're going to solve. My first step is going to write each expression, this left-hand expression and this right-hand expression, in an expanded form. I'm going to use the distributive property to clear out these parentheses. Of course, 8 times 3 is 24, and 8 times minus 4 is the negative 32. And there's 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 5 is, is that minus 30 that we're getting. Okay. Now I'd like to gather up like terms on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, the like terms are the constants. So 32, minus 32 plus 3 is a negative 29. On the right-hand side, uh, minus 30 plus 1 is a negative 29. Whoa, isn't that interesting? 24x minus 29 is equal to 24x minus 29. Of course, that's always true. Now, we could continue on with this process and, and discover that if we added 29 to both sides and divided both sides by 24, we'd end up with x is equal to x. The important thing in this particular equation is that the solution is x could be, there, there are many, many solutions. x can be any number at all. No matter what number we pick, 24x minus 29 is going to be equal to 24x minus 29. What that means is back in this original equation, no matter what x you pick and plug it into the left-hand side, calculate what that value is, you would get exactly that same amount if you plug that, that same value of x in on that uh, right hand side and simplified the expression. So any real number is going to be a solution here or whatever the domain is that we're looking for for the for the x's. Later on we'll talk about complex numbers and, and any complex number will be a solution here. No matter what you pick for x then these two things are going to be equal and therefore they'll always work up in this in this uh, original equation. Okay, here's our next equation to solve. Now I'm going to want to use a distributive property here. I want to multiply through by 3 and here I want to multiply this 5 through but it's a it's a subtracting 5 so I want to think of this as plus a negative 5. That way, when I multiply through by this negative 5, I'll keep track of the uh, negative signs as I go along. Many of you can do this without having to take this step, but I'm just doing that for, for emphasis. Now, I realize that many of you can do this in fewer steps, but I just want to kind of walk through it with you uh, this way. This positive 3 times x is going to be a 3x. That positive 3 times a negative 3 will be a negative 9. Okay, so we've replaced the left-hand side expression with an equivalent expression. On the right-hand side, we're seeing that this is 16 plus a negative 5 times this amount. So it's going to be 16 plus a negative 5 times 3. That's going to end up being a negative 15. And this negative 5 times, subtract this negative 5 times uh, 11x. Uh, well, let's multiply this out and see what we've got. 
So what we've got here is that negative 5 times 3 gives us a negative 15. That negative 5 times 11 is a negative 55, but we're subtracting that amount. So now we're going to simplify this, rewrite this uh, right-hand expression, because that's really a 16 minus 15, and this becomes a plus 55x. Now, it's true that all of you should be able to look at this expression here and multiply through by, by that negative 5 and get this next line. Now, with a little bit of practice, most of you should be able to go from this second line to this, whatever line we're at right now, in, in kind of one step. You should be able to see that that negative 5 times a 3 will be a negative 15, that negative 5 times a negative 11 will be a positive 55 11. I've thrown in a bunch of extra steps here to kind of justify and, and help anyone who's having trouble handling those uh, negative signs properly work their way through. Okay, now let's begin to gather up like terms. Now this negative 15x and this 3x gives us a negative 12x minus 9. That's an equivalent expression on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this 16 minus 15. We're gathering up like terms. The constant terms are like here, uh, plus the 55. Okay, now we want to get everything to the same side. We can choose which side we want to put the x's on. I'm going to put them on the right-hand side because I'll be able to work with, uh, with positive x values then. I'm going to add a 12x to both sides of the equation. Maybe at the same time, I might add a 9 to both sides of the equation. Oh, let's see. Let's subtract a 1 from both sides of the equation. I hope I'm not doing too many steps at once here, but I'm thinking of adding a 12x minus 1 to both sides of the equation. My reason for doing that is if I add 12x to the left-hand side, I will eliminate the x's there and move them all to the right-hand side. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides because I want to subtract that 1 off. Now let's just remove the parentheses and gather like terms. So there we've removed the parentheses. And there we're gather gathering up like terms. Notice that when we look at gather up the x's on this left-hand side, we've got the negative 12x and the 12x, which adds up to 0. The negative 9 and the negative 1 gives us that negative 10. On the right-hand side, we get 67 x's, and the 1 and the minus 1 add up to be 0. So now we'll divide both sides by 67. So the solution is that x is equal to a negative 10 over 67. I'd worry about uh, reducing this fraction. There isn't a common factor in either the top or the bottom, and it's, uh, it's already a proper fraction, so things are, are looking good there. Okay, so there's our final answer. X is equal to a negative 10 over 67. Don't forget to watch the other videos in this series.